Heart disease is one of the leading causes of death worldwide. And from about 45, our risk of developing cardiovascular disease goes way up. And in this video, I'm going to share how increasing your intake of vitamin K2 can be a tool to support your overall cardiovascular health. My name is Matt O'Connor, and I'm the founder and lead nutritionist at Honor Health. And our goal is to help you live in your best health possible and using the forgotten power of of vitamins and minerals to do this. One of the main factors that increases your risk of developing cardiovascular problems is the buildup of calcium in your blood vessels. Calcium building up in the blood vessels can cause them to become narrow, make them stiff and become harder for blood to flow through, which can increase your blood pressure. And if this isn't controlled, a buildup of calcium can lead to some major health issues. But calcium itself is not a problem. Calcium is an essential micronutrient that we need for health, supporting not just your bone health, you need it for proper muscle function and even supporting your digestive system and your stomach acid. But for our cardiovascular system health, we need to make sure that calcium is moving out of the blood vessels. When we eat food that is rich in calcium, it's going to move through your digestive system and into your blood vessels. And once it's in your blood vessels, there's a specific specific protein that helps move the calcium out of the blood vessels called matrix GLA protein, MGP for short. You don't need to know the specific details of MGP. All you need to know is that MGP helps move calcium out of the blood vessels and into the bones. And this is where vitamin K2 comes into play. MGP needs to be activated before it can move calcium out of the blood vessels and into the bones and vitamin K2 activates MGP. If we're deficient in vitamin K2, MGP stays in its inactive form and is unable to move calcium out of the blood vessels and into the bones, which can lead to a range of cardiovascular issues. You know, it's crazy to think that we're never taught about the importance of vitamins and minerals, which to me is just absolutely devastating when you have an issue so common as cardiovascular disease and nutrients like vitamin K2, which can support prevention, but you never hear about about it. We are so eager to help spread a message of the importance of vitamins and minerals and how effective these simple nutrients are for our long-term health. And with that, there are two ways that you can increase your vitamin K2 intake. Through food, which should always be the first choice, and high quality vitamin K2 supplements. Vitamin K2 in the preferred form, which is MK7, can be quite difficult to get through food alone. And why so many of us are deficient in vitamin K2 as MK7 because it's most rich in fermented foods like sauerkraut and natto, not very traditional to a standardized Western diet. Natto, which is from a fermented soybean, has about 150 micrograms of vitamin K2 as MK7 per tablespoon. And ideally, we should be aiming for at least 120 to 180 micrograms of vitamin K2 in our diet every day. And if getting enough vitamin K2 through whole foods alone is going to be a challenge, then K2 supplements become a must. If you are going to supplement, look for the form vitamin K2 as MK7, as it's more bioavailable than the form MK4, which means you absorb more and it stays in your system for longer. Vitamin K2 is a fat soluble vitamin, so it should always be taken with a meal that includes good quality fats like avocados and eggs. And we would generally recommend taking your vitamin K2 towards the earlier part of your day, either breakfast or lunch at the same time as your vitamin D supplement. 